old favourite. And Physio 101, probably did this in 1994, probably did that, probably, I can't remember, but, some point, but that's been around forever, band work, okay? Physio's been using this forever. And you know, it's creeping in the gym, you see people warming up in the gym, I, I spot it. I'm thinking, have you had a shoulder injury or are you just doing that because you want to get rotation better? But this is also done really poorly or in a way that well, that's not, you, you, you sort of got the concept but you're not doing the right thing. And that's where people, I always cringe. And I think it just needs to come with some understanding of people doing, you know, this sort of stuff. Okay, really tight bands, strengthen it up. And they're trying to get their rotator cuff better. Now, from an allied health point of view, you go think the first thing I'll be looking at is like, can you just turn around so I can see what your scapula is doing when you do that? Because you're just hauling back into retraction. You're training your rhomboids and you're doing a little bit of external rotation load, but there's no control. This is strength and control, okay? <coughs> because that's what the rotator cuff does. Stability, control. When you're throwing a ball, okay? It needs that control on the ball in the socket. So if you're going to start building some strength, make sure you're getting the fundamental movement patterns in place as well. So always do it single arm. Forget the double-handed stuff. Single arm, okay? So therefore, my shoulder stability should be right. Um, a couple of little tricks with this as well. Oh, and never do this. I know you guys don't do this, but you'll see people doing this in the gym. Okay, now where's my load? Yeah, it's that way. There's no load here. But people still do this. They've got the concept right. They've seen it. They've probably gone and mismatched, like, oh, I saw that guy doing it lying down, but oh, I'm just, I don't want to get on the floor. I'll just do it this way. It's the same movement, but they don't realize that they haven't done the four years of university to realize that that, needs, that is completely different and doesn't work if you do it that way. But bands do because the load's directly perpendicular to the muscle that's contracting. All right? Well, straight on, I should say. So, here is your external rotation. Now, a couple of little tricks with this. Don't have it too tight. The tighter this goes, the more retraction you're going to do. You've got to be able to stabilise that shoulder blade in neutral, not retracted, not protracted. Neutral position, sitting out there. This elbow needs to be by your side, not locked in. Don't fall into this trap. Okay, because there's no stability there. Having it out here is harder. Okay, it's got to be, you've got to float this in space. Sometimes I get people to put their hand there. Now, my internal rotation is not so good on that side. I'll do it this way. Okay, keep your elbow on your finger. There's a guide for you. Okay, keep your elbow on your finger. Don't let your elbow float around. Don't hold the elbow. But can you pivot on your finger? And what that will do is tell the brain, okay, I need to use the rotator cuff to keep that elbow in one position, therefore I will keep the ball in one position because that's connected via a shaft. All right? So this is directly teres minor infraspinatus work on that. It is also working on your supraspinatus. So don't think this isn't supraspinatus. Okay, it is working on that as well. Okay, just controlling that ball, it is switching on. There is less load when you have a tear. You'll be able to get away with this more than you'll be able to get away with abduction because it's, it's not direct supraspinatus. It's more biased to external rotating, okay? But you're still working. So you can work your supraspinatus tear or tear off there. What have you got going on there at a low level and bringing it back up to speed while you're focusing on how weak they are and the or how much atrophy they've got, okay? That's a really good thing. It is one of the ones where, not if you're going to do one exercise the rest of your life, but if you were and you only had a choice to do one exercise for your rotator cuff, that'll be it. External rotation. It's the most important bang for your It's like the glutes of your hip, right? That's, that's sort of like what it is. Okay? Your glute, meat and min, your controllers okay, of external rotation. The deep stuff that no one works on, they work on the max, as in they work on the deltoid, they work on the max, but they don't work on deep inside. That's your deep inside. Okay, um, so how are we going to, the alternative, of course, dumbbells. And I still use, I, some of my programs, I'll you concurrent, I'll do two things. Because there's gravity load, and it is, it does change because it actually changes with grab. you know, when you, when you go from 
here to here, that does change because now that's got, I'm sort of, gravity's helping me at that point. It's actually harder here on the external, which is interesting. And this is where you go, okay, I'm in a lengthened position. The weight is relatively heavier to my rotator cuff than it is there when I'm in a shortened position. So some people might choose this because they find the band too hard. They don't have a band at home. Maybe they've got dumbbells. But it also is used concurrently because I'm actually doing different things there than I am doing with a band that's expanding and getting harder while my muscle is shortening. Whereas here when my muscle is shortening, my weight is sort of getting easier up here because there's gravity. I can sort of balance it up here. And this is where you'll see their range of movement issues too as well. Now, are they sort of really struggling with that? Okay. Again, don't have it on their hip and doing this. Have it up there. You'll find this has got way more supraspinatus load here. They might find this difficult because they're actually holding themselves in abduction against gravity with the weight. It is isometric, sort of, but it's a lot harder in the supraspinatus than this is. So again, choose your client. You may find you with a supraspinatus tear, that's too hard. Even with a lightweight, they go, I can't do that. We see they go, actually, I can do that. And you can lighten the band up, you know, make it red, make it yellow if they need to. Make it really long, makes it lighter. So those two, maybe you'll start with different strokes, different folks. Now, the stability ones, this is when people are really struggling with stability of their shoulder blade. So here, because remember, you're not always just doing shoulder blade protraction work, stability work, without doing any rotator cuff in your program. And we talked about how you can't just go, oh, I'll finish that, now move on to this, and stop that. This will maybe be going concurrently with your program. So if someone's got stability issues that are not dire, but when they do that, they, 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 always, they can't seem to stop moving. Okay, so when they pull out, even if it's light, their brain wants to retract. They just, why am I, why am I doing that? But you press them, that's right, this is working, everything's going. But when they go into a functional pattern like that, when the brain says external rotate, their rhomboids take over. And this is where you may add on something like this. Okay, whether it be protraction or retraction, then, I mean, it's a bit of a rigmarole setup. You have to have a long band, and you know, sometimes it's a little bit sort of hit and miss with what you're doing. But that one I've got a super long band, I'll try and do this for you. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that around. So if I protract, if my shoulder blade pulls forward too much, every time I pull out, I'm doing this. I can then go, okay, you know what? I'm gonna pull that back and then external rotate. That's too short a band. Okay, I might just come in a little bit. Okay, so okay, okay I'm gonna just set that there, pull out. So I'm learning to control here. So that's someone who does this sort of work and needs to learn to go, no, you need to do that. Same way, go around the other way on the other stability. There's no progression there, so it's just a different way of doing it. <laughs> this is really hard for me to do. I'll go around this way. That's it. Oh. Okay, this is someone who comes back too far when they come out. So you keep it forward and pull out. So this is for someone who pulls out and does this. So they go, I want to, so you say, keep the tension on the band out there. So you're almost protracting as you're external rotating. Subtle, hard to work out and set up, but so good for someone who needs that feedback and a bit of tension load to go, where am I supposed to be? Oh, there. Okay. As I pull back, don't pull back, pull forward. Okay. You may find you never do that in the next sort of year with someone because they just don't need it. But it's there as an option in your brain to go, that's what I do for someone who's, do why are they doing that? Okay, add that on. Maybe they need to do more of the protraction stuff before, but it is a really good option for people. And I had a couple of surgical clients that really needed that over the years, um, and it worked well for them. So, again, trying to add on stability before you jump down and increase range and load and all that sort of thing. Make sure that stability component is added on. You know, there's not too many stability options when it comes to a stability exercise to add on more stability. That's why there's not much going on. Usually it's sort of progressions, loads, all those sort of things. 
If we go up into the regressions first, what's this one? Does anyone know what I'm doing there? Yep. Spot on there, Marlon. So you're training essentially the tendon if they can't handle full load like that. Of course, very important for post-surgical, but if someone's got a tendinopathy and you just start smashing them in that way, they may get really sore. So you are not doing the concentric phase. Load them up and they eccentrically come in. Grab them, easy, if anything, nothing, and come in. What it allows them to go, do is a high load and the reps and sets without massive fatigue. So it's stimulating that eccentric control. And eccentric stuff has been proven with tendons, but you need to then go from eccentric to eccentric and concentric. Okay, you can't just do eccentric. Again, it gets you half the job, but it's a very good entry point into someone after isometrics, which is way down there. So they might start with isometrics, you know, for the first injury, then they move to eccentric, then they move to concentric, then they add some stability, then they add some more load and range, and away we go. So, like with all these diagrams, this is maybe not where you start with some people. You may start way over here and go backwards and through and down. All right. Some people are straight into this. But I usually probably put them here or there first. Um, this is your isometric. Now, with isometrics, if I go this way, it is, and this is your pain-relieving and muscle activation stuff where you don't want to move a joint, you're just trying to work on a tendon, you're just pushing in the same direction as the band, closed chain, awesome, and you wind that up below pain and switch that on. Just like doing VOMO squeezes in the quads for your knee, early doors after surgery, you do isometrics, right? Okay, so this is the same deal, and you're doing external rotation. This is actually really good pain relief for people who've got constant aching going on. Okay, do that, you may find 30 seconds of that, six sets of that, and you may find, actually that feels heaps better, because you've just got their muscle out of spasm and tightness and pain, and you just put some blood flow through it, and you put some adrenaline through it, and away you go. What type of pain people? Um, aching pain, maybe inflammation, injury, surgery, those sort of people. Yep, yep. And if they're too weak, um, but it is, it's, it's got its place in a program somewhere, but it's not for every client. You wouldn't start every client and, oh, you're weak, you need to do isometrics. No, not necessarily. They could probably just go into here or here. This might be just, they can do this with a very light band. But when you're not allowed to move a joint or that sort of fulcrum movement through the joint is just too much, go back to here. Okay, there's another option here of just doing, lifting up and holding isometrics against gravity. So going from, you can do a one arm, so just, there's an isometric external rotation, okay? Two arms is obviously a bit more demand in the shoulder, but they have to have 90 degrees external rotation mobility before they get that, don't they? Whereas the isometrics, they don't need, they don't need to get up to there, do they? They can do it down here. So pick your client. Um, you know, I had to get, I had to do this one, an isometric ability to be able to, I had to be able to have that strength, just be able to hold myself here so I can get up to that point. So I could actually sneak in and do isometric work on my front there before I was allowed to actually use a lever load through there. And I'll show you with shoulder surgery, just so you've got a really good idea about when surgeons say don't do, you know, banded movement work because you fear of pulling the anchors out of the bone, you'll see where the anchors go in and all that sort of thing. And you're going to think an isometric won't pull an anchor out, but when you pull, it will. Right? When you move and pull, that's when you've got some way more load on the insertion point of those tendons. D, distraction. Again, what do you do in the clinic? AP glides, there it is again. Now, it gets a bit tricky, admittedly. You know, you have to sort of... I get a few people doing this at home who have got setups. 
You know, they've got, oh, yeah, I've got a bit of this and a bit of home. I could put that onto a boat. We talk about it. Can you do that? Because they really need it. They're struggling with a little bit of impingement problems. Okay, you might start getting them doing. You know, those people who either, you just know that ball is sitting really well forward. And when they, when you, you, can, you can play with it and you push it back in the socket and external rotate, and all of a sudden their range is better, you go, oh. And when it's out, when you don't put any weight on it, you put, and they, they block and they catch, you go, oh, that hurts. Because they're getting impingement, anterior impingement. So there's no point in them bashing away of this if they start getting sore in the front. So these are the people that go, I say, oh, he goes, oh, I can feel that. He goes, where? In the front. I'm going, that's not why you're supposed to be feeling it. So maybe it's because they're doing this <coughs> when they externally rotate. So having that distraction band on, pulling them back while they externally rotate. So here's one I prepared earlier. You can see how hard this gets. I'll put it down here. I'll make sure. So I have to load them up. Okay, pull me back. And you, to be honest, that feels better, no lie. <laughs> if I do that on my shoulder and I wind that back, I feel I've got way more range. There's nothing at the end there for me. There's no sort of tightness feeling. I just hold it there, it's fine. Whereas if I don't have that, there's some. There's something there. And it's a feeling of like a block or something that's going on there. And just enough drag. Some of that will be tricking the brain a bit and activating, you'll be able to get out further. It also provides a little bit of resistance so it's harder for them to do to rotate out. So there's added strengthening there in there as well. There's a bit of progression going on. The band coming down is even just hard. There's more load going on. So you have to pull back against that load if the band's hauling you down. Okay. Sometimes, you know, you just won't use this. It's just too hard to set up. It's too hard for the plant. They're not muscular enough. They don't have enough strength. But there is use for this. And I find it works really well. With it. And it helps you through that impingement stuff. Because it can get really tricky. You're going, I just can't get rid of this person's impingement. Well, do what you do in the clinic. Replicate that at home. See how that goes. Does that work for that client? Now, progressions is easy. 45 to 60 to 90 to actually doing a full diagonal. What I mean by that is, there's your what we call zero, neutral, okay? Then you're going 45. Now 45, it's out here. So think of the scaption plane, okay? So where I'm in that nice press pull position. So it's a very functional position to be in, to be, can I have external rotation strength in that position? Now it also works a lot on you know, there's way more supraspinatus and mobile because you're holding yourself in abduction. There's a big difference from here to here. So you might have to graduate this with some clients. They might be here on a green and then you have to go here on a red because it's harder. Drop the load off, go to a red, bring it down, build them back up again. With this one, educate them. Know your planes of movement. Stand 45 degrees to that band. So 45, you can remember 45 degrees abduction, 45 degrees facing the band. So when they pull back, it's not going to do this. All right? The line of pull is all wrong. I need the line of pull relative to that muscle here. Okay? So here, they'll get the pack. Now what's going to happen is they'll go, and they'll try and get it up there like this, and they use their traps and everything. So this has to be relatively the right load. But once they get good at the control, and you'll know when the control part improves, as they go back and they go, and they can just keep winding it back, and everything's in place. It's just about strength. They can isolate it. Then you know the rest of the rotator cuff and your scapula is all stood in there holding them, saying, yeah, you can do your job, do your external rotation. There's your stability. Okay, they can crank it up without compensating through the whole joint and Shoulder weight system, okay? Something I've learned, how you, like you'll see people doing this, you go, no, that's wrong. Bring it back, change the band, bring them back forward. Teach them what they should be looking for, especially in a mirror. Obviously, then you get to 90 degrees. When you get to 90, face the band, okay? Pull that back to 90. Now you can go sort of 45, 60. Sometimes you can just jump to 90. They need to have full clear 90 degrees abduction at that point and pretty good abduction strength, and then they haul it backwards like that. Again, these people will get to the point where they go, 
and they're trying to do this and compensate. Now, you watch my surgical arm. Here we go. Now that's me, I can't, I just run out of steam. If I've stabilised here, there's nothing left in the tank. I can hold it there, but I can't get any further. Now that's, some of that's power, some of that's capture the restriction. If you look at this one, if I can show you this way. See that range? Right, so when you see that sort of thing, okay, that person's got in range capture restriction. Look at the history, oh, he's had frozen shoulder, or he's had the surgery or whatever. Okay, so some part of my thing, and that's a, there's, a, there's a common theme going on here. My external rotation mobility of the pole is not great. Over here, I want to roll in. Okay, all these things, they'll come out when you start doing stuff like that. You go, whoa, okay, hang on. You need to still keep going with that mobility because you haven't got that right yet. We can still do this, but you have to work on that. Otherwise, they'll just start trying to force it, and then, then they'll lose. They want to go, you've got to get to 90 degrees. They'll start compensating, and they'll lose that whole thing they're trying to achieve in the first place. Um, diagonal, I love diagonals. Again, this is getting towards a little bit more movement pattern, a little bit more sport related. You can't just have someone like this and then expect them to play tennis because it's a movement pattern, okay? Winding up, golf, tennis, whatever they're gonna do. I like doing this one, where you're going from an internal rotated position like this, there's almost a front raise, like a flexion, elevation, abduction, external rotation pattern. Hold my posture right. And then the eccentric control. So the shoulder blade moves now. So the shoulder blade does retract and elevate a bit. You just want to make sure when you come down, you don't do that. So the shoulder blade stabilizes and then returns. Make sure the band's not too hard. Hard one to do, but really good to get that full movement like that. Ready for, you know, this plane we don't use much in sort of weight. You don't, you don't see people doing weights in the gym like this, you know. They're usually doing a front raise or a, this or a shoulder press. Okay, not this diagonal stuff. Important for your sports people, your weekend warrior per tennis person. Okay, a lot of stuff.